um, Dr. Hatching, William Tam. Your Honor, uh, Terry Thompson is up, uh, representing Bill Tam. I have one preliminary uh, issue, if you wouldn't mind, that we talk about before we begin the examination, before he's sworn in. On the 8th of uh, January, I filed on behalf of Dr. Tam a motion for withdrawal and his uh, intervener uh, status. And the uh, opposition papers and reply papers were received on the 13th. That's about a week ago. And I haven't uh, seen any uh, order yet on that. And I think it'd be uh, appropriate to, to know before he begins his testimony whether um, his voluntary withdrawal as a, a party intervener has been granted, or he, he's here because of the subpoena, whether what his status is, whether he's a third party or whether he's a uh, party intervener. Mr. Boyce? Your Honor, uh, as we indicated in our papers, um, we think um, it's too late for him to withdraw. Um, he brought this case. Uh, he's now going to testify in this case. Well, he and didn't bring the case, but he, he voluntarily intervened. joined the case. Joined the case. He <clears throat> intervened, intervened uh, in the case. Um, and um, uh, we think that uh, you, you can't intervene, litigate it, and then decide in the middle you want to get out of it. Uh, so, um, as we indicated in our papers, um, we don't think it's appropriate uh, for him to withdraw at this time. Ordinarily, under these circumstances, Mr. Thompson, uh, a defendant seeking to withdraw after having either brought a case or, in this case, intervened in a case, would accept a judgment. Some of the difficulty I have with the situation that you present is it's hard for me to envision what kind of judgment uh, Mr. Tam could accept that would be a reasonable basis for pitting him to withdraw at this juncture. Do you have anything that you'd like to add for further consideration in that regard? Well, I think the basic, uh, basic issue is his uh, intervention was purely vol voluntary. Uh, even if uh, a case is it's, it's to your benefit to intervene, you don't have to intervene. And uh, by the same token, uh, withdrawal is purely voluntary. And uh, even the uh, uh, plaintiffs have stated in some of their papers that if he didn't like the intrusive nature of the uh, uh, discovery, he could withdraw. And they mentioned that several times. And uh, so he's mentioned some compelling reasons for withdrawing, which are in his uh, declaration and my motion. Um, but uh, frankly, I don't believe he needs any. I couldn't find any uh, any uh, uh, compelling or uh, uh, controlling uh, legal authority that said that he needed any any uh, uh, anything to withdraw other than his his uh, uh, interest in withdrawing. Well, there have to be some consequences to a party joining a lawsuit and then putting the other side to. Uh, the expense and effort of litigating against that party and then withdrawing. Typically, in this situation, it would be, as I said, the acceptance of a judgment or some relief that would redress <coughs> what has been done to resist the party who has intervened. And it's hard to imagine in this circumstance exactly what that could be. In addition, there are some testimonial reasons why proceeding as a party may be somewhat different from proceeding as a third party witness. And because of the uncertainty as to how those factors may play out, I thought this is not something that I needed to address until after um, Mr. Tam testifies. And he is going to testify one way or the other, either as a party or a non-party. Yeah, that's that's right. He's here, and he's, uh, he's been here several days. Yes, I've, I've noticed that, and you've been very good about attending. Um, so that rather leaves me to think that the more prudent course of action would be to uh, hear Mr. Tam's testimony, see what uh, that amounts to, and then to consider uh, what his status should be going forward. So... My inclination would be to 
continue to defer the matter until such time as his role in the case has been completely clarified. As far as his uh, deposition, uh, if he were a third party, then his deposition could be used to impeach, but it wouldn't be uh, allowed to be uh, entered. Uh, yes, as a party, as you I'm sure know, a party's deposition can be used by the adverse party at any time in the course of the trial for any purpose. And so that makes some difference. And I don't know what <coughs> prejudice there may be to the plaintiffs in the event of a withdrawal. Um, and perhaps after Mr. Tam's testimony, uh, plaintiffs may consent to the withdrawal. Perhaps not. So I've kind of thought the best, better course of action would be just to see what his role is in the underlying facts, what his role in the litigation is, and then to evaluate uh, what, if any, action to take on the motion to withdraw. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. <coughs> Call Dr. Tam to the witness. <coughs> Shing William Tam. T A M. H A K S H I N G. Good afternoon, Dr. Tam. We haven't met, but my name is David Boys, I and have. I represent the plaintiffs. Um, you uh, were an official proponent of Proposition 8, correct? Yes. And the way you got to be an official proponent of Proposition 8 is you were invited by protectmarriage.com to be an official proponent, correct? Yes. And in connection with the campaign for uh, Proposition 8, uh, you worked with a number of people from protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. And uh, those people included Mr. Prentice, correct? Yes. And Mr. Punya, correct? Yes. And Mr. Schubert, correct? Uh, were there any others from protectmarriage.com that you recall that you worked with on the campaign? Uh, probably some clerical person that emailed me about like a conference call or something like that. Okay. Or somebody called me about uh, going to a press uh, meeting or something. Okay, thank you. Um, now, in October of 2008, you supervised the preparation of the language for Proposition 8, correct? I don't quite understand what, what does supervise mean. Well, sir, let me ask you to look at tab one of uh, the binder that's in front of you. Uh, PX0507? Uh, yes. Okay. And um, this is your declaration, correct? Yes. Um, uh, that you uh, declared under the penalty of perjury uh, was true and correct, correct? Yes. And if you turn in this declaration to paragraph 6. All right. See that you write there, in October 2008, I supervised the preparation of the appropriate language for Proposition 8. I don't quite remember what that particular document is. If you can remind me. Uh, which particular document are you talking about? Uh, the appropriate language or proposition date. But I did, if it is about the 14 words 
on Proposition 8. Uh, that I did agree to it, and uh, yeah, if in that sense, supervision that if it is not that 14 words, I wouldn't go along with it, then I agree that's the supervision. This declaration that you have in front of you, that you signed? Yes. Did you prepare this declaration? No, I did not. Who prepared this declaration? Uh, from Protect Marriage. ProtectMarriage.com Protect Marriage. Marriage. prepared this, prepare this declaration for you? Right. Let me just let me just understand what you're saying. Um, ProtectMarriage.com prepared this declaration that is Plaintiff's Exhibit 507 for you, and you signed it. Yes, I signed it. So, um, the language here that says that in Octo October of 2008, you supervised the preparation of the appropriate language for Proposition 8. That was written by ProtectMarriage.com. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, did you um, invest substantial time, effort, and personal resources in campaigning for Proposition 8? Yes. And between January of 2008 and November of 2008, did you dedicate the majority of your working hours towards qualifying Proposition 8 for the ballot and campaigning for its enactment. Yes. You organized several rallies in support of Proposition 8, correct? I helped, yes. And in doing so, you worked with people from protectmarriage.com, correct? No. I. The rallies were not originated by protectmarriage.com. You say originated. Um, my question to you was whether or not, in connection with rallies, you worked with the people from protectmarriage.com or not. Uh, no, because those rallies were mainly Asian Americans, and those are the people that I knew. And... Um, I only invited ProtectMarriage.com's uh, Ron Prentice to be present and to be one of the speakers. You invited Mr. Prentice to be one of the speakers at your rally? Yes. And Mr. Prentice was the chief executive officer of ProtectMarriage.com, correct? Right. Um, and do you consider that working with ProtectMarriage.com in connection with the rally? I. Uh, Yes, I, I would say so. <laughs> okay, I would too. Um, uh, now, um, in connection with uh, Proposition 8, did you personally uh, take part in debates? Yes, I did. And, uh, for example, um, you had a debate on Channel 26 here in San Francisco, correct? I had a debate here in San Francisco, uh, not at Channel 26. Channel 26 came and uh, made a report on it that night. So that debate was not originated by Channel 26. It was a debate that was covered by Channel 26, is that what you're right, saying? Right, right. Um, now this debate that was covered by Channel 26, was a debate in which you were campaigning for Proposition 8, correct? Yes. And you were told by the people at protectmarriage.com to participate in that debate, correct? Yes. Now, the campaign for what became Proposition 8 began in 2007, correct? Uh, could you specify? Uh, the ch at 2007, uh, if the collection 
or the preparation of the collection of signatures is considered as a campaign, then yes. And, for example, in October of 2006, um, 2006? I'm sorry, 2007. 2007 right? In October of 2007, um, you were waiting for instructions from protectmarriage.com of when you would start collecting those signatures, correct? Yes. And eventually protectmarriage.com gave you instructions as to when you should start collecting the signatures, correct? Yes. Um, Honor, I, I uh, object to the uh, leading nature of most of these questions. Sam is an adverse witness. He's not a party on the other side of the case. Objection overruled. <clears throat> In uh, January of 2008, uh, you sent an email to pastors and church leaders on the instructions of protectmarriage.com, correct? Uh, I don't know which one you are referring to. Um, that's a fair point. Um, uh, over the course of uh, January and February and subsequent months, you sent a number of emails to pastors and church leaders on the instructions of protectmarriage.com, correct? What do you mean by on the instruction of protect marriage? Um, uh, in uh, cooperation, uh, following discussions with protectmarriage.com, you would talk with them, you would agree what needs to be done, and then you would do it. Correct? Uh, in, I did send out emails, right, to ask the church leaders to collect signatures. Um, Yeah, after discussion with protectmarriage.com. Okay. That, Objection, Your that, Honor. That can be started, yeah. Since these letters uh, to the pastors and church leaders were all attorney's eyes only, so I would uh, respectfully request that, that uh, they're not introduced in court. And also, while I'm up, if I could ask for a standing objection. Uh, similar to what you granted the proponents regarding the First Amendment privilege. Uh, as questions get to uh, Mr. Tam's personal political views, motivation, and that sort of thing, uh, that I'd like to have a, uh, in order to preserve it, a standing objections on the First Amendment privilege ground, similar to what you granted the proponents. And I know that this was uh, lost in the appeals court, but uh, I'd like to preserve that. All right. Fair enough. You can certainly reserve uh, that as a standing objection, and therefore you don't have to make an objection to every question that may implicate the uh, uh, the issue. <clears throat> uh, Your Honor, uh, before proceeding, I would uh, offer Plaintiff's Exhibit 507. Hearing no objection, 507 is admitted. Dr. Tam, um, uh, let me ask you to um, uh, turn to tab two. Which is plaintiff's exhibit 2685. And is uh, this what number again, please? Tab two. Right. And it's exhibit Plaintiff's Exhibit 2685. Headed ProtectMarriage.com Coalition Endorsements, partial listing, do you see? Sorry, I okay. cannot find it. Uh, look I, at, I look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 2685. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, you may. <clears throat> Back there. <laughs> All right, got it, got it. Yeah.
Now, um, is uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 2685 a partial listing of the coalition of protectmarriage.com? I believe so. Uh, Your Honor, I would offer Plaintiff's Exhibit 2685. Hearing no objection. Do you wish to raise any, to lay any further foundation with this witness, Mr. Boyce? Um, uh, let me just ask one more. I, I was actually only going to ask him one more question. Um, I, I, actually, I think I may have already asked him this question. Um, uh, are the organizations and uh, people that are listed here um, a partial listing of the coalition uh, that supported protectmarriage.com in promoting uh, Proposition 8? I believe so, but I don't know because this is their website. I don't know. Uh, I only see our organization's name on it. That's all I know. Um, well, let me, if necessary, uh, I can take you through this one by one. Um, uh, first organization there is Focus on the Family. Do you see that? Yes. And was that one of the organizations that was part of the ProtectMarriage.com coalition supporting Proposition 8? I believe so. Next um, organization is Family Research Council. Was that one of the organizations that was part of the ProtectMarriage.com coalition supporting Proposition 8? Now, I, I really don't know why they put these names on there. Uh, you have to ask them, not me, <laughs> because I have no position of knowing which organization or, or person on this list is their coalition. Um, I really don't know. Dr. Tam, my question to you was whether the Family Research Council was one of the organizations that was part of the ProtectMarriage.com coalition supporting Proposition 8. Yes, no, or I don't know. I don't know. You know what the Family Research Council is? I know what it is. Worked with people from the Family Research Council on Proposition 8. Did you not, sir? You didn't get emails that included them? Oh, I get a lot of emails from different organizations. That doesn't mean I work with them. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, right? let, let, let me try to be clear. Um, the Family Research Council was one of the organizations that you got emails from and that were listed as joint addressees with you and your organization in connection with Proposition 8, correct? Could be. Um, now, um, let me ask you to read to yourself the organizations that are here and tell me whether any of the organizations listed here are organizations that you recognize and know were part of the coalition working with protectmarriage.com to support Proposition 8. I must say that I don't know. You don't know any of them? Oh, I know some of them. Ah, yes. Yeah. So that's what I'm asking you, the ones you know. Oh, the ones that I know, yeah. I know some. You want me to read it? What I want, what I want you to do is I want you to identify which of the organizations on this list that you, from your own personal knowledge, 
know we're part of the coalition working with protectmarriage.com in support of Proposition 8. Okay. Uh, focus on the family, Family Research Council, uh, California Family Council, Values Advocacy Council, Uh, traditional Family Coalition, those are the ones I recognize. And the Traditional Family Coalition that you just mentioned, uh, what is your relationship to the Traditional Family Coalition? Uh, I'm the uh, Executive Director of Traditional Family Coalition. Let me ask you um, uh, to look next at Plaintiff's Exhibit 2620. You're in uh, 2685, are you, Mr. Boyce? Yes, I'm offering that. I beg your pardon? I'm through with that, but I'm offering it. All right. 2685 is admitted. Objection overruled. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm there. Um, now, this is a uh, protectmarriage.com email, and I have uh, no reason to believe that you actually saw this um, at or about the time it was sent, which was July 2, 2000. Um, uh, however, I do want to ask you about um, a paragraph that is in the bottom third of the page. It is a one-sentence paragraph that reads, the Chinese coalition with Bill Tam remains strong and he is one of the signatories. Do you see that? Yes. Um, Your Honor. Your Honor, I object on a basis of relevance. This was uh, written in 2007 before the Proposition 8 campaign started. Um, Bill Tam, uh, was acknowledged by the plaintiffs, uh, did not uh, see this. It seems like it's uh, irrelevant. Not sure that it's irrelevant. This appears to be a document generated in connection with the gathering of signatures in connection with Proposition 8. I think that establishes its relevance. And Mr. Boyce has indicated he does not believe that, at least contemporaneously with the document, uh, the witness saw it but he can certainly pursue a question with respect to it. Objection overruled. <clears throat> what is the Chinese coalition that is being referred to here, if you know? Uh, Chinese Evangelical Christians. And um, what was your relationship to the Chinese Evangelical Christians Coalition? Well, I, because of my uh, position at Traditional Family Coalition, um, I know some Chinese churches. And um, would I be correct to infer from this that as of July of 2007, you were already working with protectmarriage.com in connection with what became Proposition 8? Uh, yes, I think so. But my memory is not very good. I, I, I don't exactly remember what was being done in 07, really. Um, uh, does this document refresh your recollection? that as of July 2, uh, 2007, you were working with protectmarriage.com in connection with what became Proposition 8. Yeah, I think uh, the I was approached and 
I was informed that some uh, marriage amendment could be uh, put onto the ballot, but then we need signature gathering. So that's that's what it is. Uh, let me, uh, uh, Your Honor, I would offer uh, uh, plaintiff's exhibit um, 2620. Hearing no objection, 2620 is admitted. Dr. Tam, let me ask you to look next at plaintiff's exhibit 2476. Okay. This is, do you have it? Yes. This is an email that you sent on October 26, October 22nd, 2007, correct? Mm-hmm, 07, yeah. And um, you send it to um, whom, sir? Uh, as addressed here is called the Dear Friend of TFC. And these are the uh, members of TFC, which is Traditional Family Coalition. Okay. And the first paragraph, you say, I'm still waiting for hyperlink HTTP protectmarriage.com for instructions of when we would start the signature collection for California's Marriage Amendment Initiative. You see that? Yes. And was that a true statement uh, as of October 22, 2007? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I would offer plaintiff's exhibit 2476. Very well. 2476 is admitted. As part of your work with protectmarriage.com, you solicited contributions to protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. Uh, let me ask you to turn to uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 2612. Okay. This is an email that you sent on February 14, 2008, correct? Yes. And uh, this is a um, an email that refers to the interview or debate that you had that was broadcast on Channel 26, correct? Say 2612? 26, I'm sorry, the exhibit number? Yes. 2472. I'm sorry, 2472. <clears throat> I apologize if I misspoke, Your Honor. Your Honor, I did say 2612, um, uh, but I, um, it's, it's 2472. All right, 2472 it is. Are you with that uh, exhibit, Mr. Tam? Yes, All right. I'm there. And this is an email that you sent on February 14, 2008, correct? Yes. And um, uh, you're talking about the opportunity that you have to publicize what you refer to as, quote, our protect marriage amendment, close yes. quote, on television, correct? Is that correct, sir? Yes. And... This was a debate that you participated in that was going to be broadcast and was broadcast over Channel 26, correct? Uh, it's an interview. It's not a debate. Um, is this separate from the debate that you referred to earlier? You said you participated in a debate that was broadcast over Channel 26. Do you recall that? Yeah, it's separate. Separate, okay. Two, two separate events. Okay. Um, so you both had a debate and a separate interview, both of which were broadcast on Channel 26, and both of which 
you were using to promote Proposition 8, correct? Yes. Now, let me focus on the debate. And uh, I asked you this question, uh, but I'm not sure that we've got an answer. That debate that you participated in that was broadcast over Channel 26, that was a debate that you participated in because you were told to participate by protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. Um, and now let me go to uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 2612. Uh, is this an email uh, that you sent on January 10, 2008? Yes. And uh, in that, you talk about the fact that many Christian groups are joining forces to launch Proposition 8, correct? Yes. And those forces included... Um, uh, your organization of TF TFC and included protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. And mm -hmm. California Family Council, correct? Yes. And Concerned Women of America, correct? And the Values Advocacy Council, correct? Yes. And others that you do not list, correct? Right. Now, Your Honor, I'd offer Plaintiff's Exhibit 2612. 2612 is admitted. Um, let me ask you to turn next to Plaintiff's Exhibit 2640. Okay. And this is an email chain that includes uh, both you and Mr. Puno, correct? What I see here is my name on it and Punio's name on it. I don't know whether it's a chain or not. Well, uh, sir, if you um, if you begin, I'd object on attorney-client privilege. I think at that point, uh, Mr. Attorney client privilege. However, Your Honor, there was no claim of privilege at the time that I'm aware of. I'm also not sure just looking at the substance. I'm also believe just looking at the substance of the document not appear to be relating uh, legal advice. I just wanted to clarify, we had produced the documents, we had gathered them and produced them, and we were not asserting attorney-client, defendant interveners, protect marriage was not. Very well, 2640 is admitted. This includes both emails from Mr. Puno to you and emails from you to Mr. Puno, correct? Yes. And what was the purpose of the emails that you sent to Mr. Puno? What were you trying to tell him? I was asking uh, 
Anything I shouldn't say or disclose in case of question from Chinese press? Let me ask you um, uh, to look next at Plaintiff's Exhibit 2651. And while you're doing that, Your Honor, I think I may not have offered Plaintiff's Exhibit 2472. And I would offer that at this time. Very well. 2472 is admitted. Have uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 2651, Dr. Tan? Yes. And uh, this includes both emails from Lynn Fischel to you and emails from you to Lynn Fischel, correct? Yes. Who is Lynn Fischel? Uh, someone who works for California Family Council. And this uh, email that went to you is directed to the protectmarriage.com leadership, correct? Uh, that's what it says here. And that's what it said when you received it in March of 2008, correct, sir? Yes. And you were part of the protectmarriage.com leadership, correct, sir? I think she is just being nice to call me one of the protectmarriage.com leadership. I don't believe I am. Well, at the time, you didn't tell her that you didn't think you were part of the leadership, did you, sir? I didn't think that was, uh, you know, when somebody says something nice to you, should you say that, hey, don't say it, I'm not, that's good. Yeah. You know, I... Uh, that that's common sense. In fact, uh, at that time, I don't really care what what they call me. But frankly, I don't believe I am protectmarriage.com uh, within their core core group. I'm not. Not in their core group. No. What do you mean by core group? I don't know. You have been talking about. I was sitting there. I listened to all your. Uh, <laughs> different comments about core group, and I know I'm not. Um, so the, the term core group, something you sort of picked up in this litigation, correct? Right, right. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, um, let, um, let me uh, ask you to look at 2609, and while you're doing that, I would offer Plaintiff's Exhibit 2651. Very well, 2651 is admitted. And this is 2649, is it? Uh, 2609 is the name. 2609, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, now, plaintiff's exhibit 2609 um, uh, is an email uh, that you sent April 15, 2008, correct? Yes. And... Um, do you remember telling me just a moment ago that you thought that Lynn Fischel was just being nice to you when she described you as part of the protectmarriage.com leadership? Remember telling me that? Yes. Another document that's on the uh, highly confidential attorney's eyes only. This is to pastors and church leaders. It's a private, uh, private email, so I've checked any, uh, any uh, open court a discussion of this document. And this is not not from uh, not from the protectmarriage.com internal memo from a bill to his. Uh, this, this is a memorandum or email sent by the witness, correct? No. Objection overruled. Uh, now, Dr. Tam, uh, let me direct your attention to the second uh, paragraph. 
Okay. See where you write this year, TFC, and that's you, sir, correct? Yes. Is playing a major role to put one man, one woman marriage into California's Constitution. You see that? Yes. Is that a true statement in April of 2008? Uh, yes. And you then go on to say that you served as one of the proponents of this initiative and worked closely with protectmarriage.com to collect 1,050,000 signatures. Do you see that? Yes. And was that a true statement also? Uh, yes, in the sense that now this is April of 2008. Uh, at that stage, it was during the uh, signature petition phase. So, yeah, I was playing a major role. I, I spent a lot of time uh, sending out petitions and collecting them and uh, worked closely with uh, all the mechanics with uh, Protect Marriage to, you know, get the uh, petitions off to the Chinese churches. So those are true statements, yeah, working closely with them. But that's at the April. And when you say working closely with them, you mean you were working closely with protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. Your Honor, I'd offer plaintiffs exhibit 2609. Very now, well. uh, this, this document, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this document contains a lot of sensitive numbers that I would not like to disclose to the public. I object also, Your Honor. This is one that we did uh, designate uh, attorney size only, and uh, some of the major reasons is there are very, very sensitive numbers in here, and this is not something that uh, should be uh, available for public to see. It's salary numbers, budget numbers, information about uh, Dr. Tam's family. Um, so it, it falls, I think it falls uh, strictly under the attorney's eyes only. Uh, this document is my letter to uh, the pastors and church leaders. Most of the things are talking about uh, my personal uh, information and your Honor, um, I would be very offended if this is put into public eye. Your Honor, um, uh, we'll be prepared um, to redact the balance of the paragraph after the two sentences that I read. The two sentences that I read are really the key points for us. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with Dr. Tam and his counsel, but um, in the spirit of trying to be cooperative, we'll redact those. Very well. That should take care of the problem. 2609 is redacted, will be admitted. Let me ask you to look next at Plaintiff's Exhibit 2650. Okay. Now, at the bottom of the first page, there is an email from you to Lynn Fischel, correct? Yes. And you're responding to an earlier email that she had sent you, correct? Mm-hmm, yeah. And one of the things that you're asking her is who is Brian Brown and why is he speaking for us? Do you see that? Yes. And who is the us there? Those people who are uh, who are within the uh, I would say the protectmarriage.com. Yeah. And that included you and TFC, correct, sir? Uh, yes, to a certain extent, yes. 
or I would uh, offer plaintiff's exhibit 2650. 50 is admitted. Um, let me ask you to look next, Dr. Tam, at plaintiff's exhibit 2538. This is a uh, email that you wrote on May 15th, 2008, correct? Mm, yes. And um, it talks about at one point how you stood with the lawyers from protectmarriage.com and uh, other uh, people when the um, California Supreme Court had come down with its opinion uh, saying that same-sex marriage is legal for California, correct? Yes. And um, the last sentence of this says, we can't lose the next battle. And the next battle was the battle for Proposition 8, correct, sir? Uh, yes. Okay, we can't lose the battle for Proposition 8 or God's definition of marriage will be permanently erased in California. Do you see that? Yes. And was that your motivation for participating with marriage, uh, protectmarriage.com in promoting Proposition 8? Uh, yeah, one of the reasons. Um, your Honor, I would offer Plaintiff's Exhibit 2538. Very well, 2538 is admitted. Uh, what were the other reasons, Dr. Tam? Uh, the other reason is uh, I think it's very important for the next generation uh, to understand the historical meaning of marriage. Uh, it is very important that our children won't grow up to fantasize or think about should I marry Jane or John when I grow up? Because uh, this is very important for Asian families, the cultural issues, uh, the stability of the family. Uh, any other reasons? that you supported Proposition 8? Uh, that's about it for the next generation. You wanted the next generation to understand the historical meaning of marriage. Is that your testimony? Right. Um, and um, uh, did you believe that it was necessary in order for people to be educated about the historical meaning of marriage? Uh, yes. To prevent gays and lesbians from marrying? Uh, I did not think of it that way. Okay. Um, I, you support uh, domestic partnerships for gays and lesbians, correct? Yes. Um, and you support uh, legislation uh, giving gays and lesbians uh, equal rights in employment and housing, correct? Yes. Uh, and you support the right of gays to adopt children, correct? Uh, I haven't come to a conclusion with that yet. One way or the other? Uh, no. Okay. Um, uh, do you consider yourself uh, hostile uh, to gays and lesbians? No, I don't. Um, let me ask you about a website. One man, one woman dot net. That's a website you're familiar with, correct, sir? Yes. And Your Honor, that's a, an anonymous website. There's, a, uh, it's, there's no uh, foundation here. For that, that Dr. Tam has any connection with that website. There's no uh, 
B, whether Mr. Blaise can lay a foundation. Um, Dr. Dr. Exhibit what? Um, um, uh, it, it's going to be Exhibit, uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 2199, Your Honor. Um, uh, Dr. Tam, uh, before we get to that exhibit, Dr. Yes. Tam, can I have your attention? Thank you. Um, um, what is your connection with the website onemanonewoman.net? My connection? Yes, sir. Uh, well, this is a website of a group uh, called America Return to God Prayer Movement. Called what? America Return to God Prayer Movement. And um, what is your relationship to that group? Uh, I'm the secretary of that group. You're the secretary of that group. Okay. Um, and who else participates in that group? Uh, different uh, Chinese pastors. Okay. Um, and as the secretary of this group, you're familiar with their website, correct? Yes. And you see what's on the website, correct? Yes. And if you saw something on the website that you did not approve of, you'd say it, right? Uh, i say it, but... They might not listen. <laughs> well, have they, ever not, have they ever not listened to you, sir, about something on the website? Uh, yeah. What, what did you want to put on the website or take off the website that they wouldn't do? Uh, for example, well, something like... Uh, Something mentioned about bestiality uh, that I object to. You objected to something about bestiality. Right, the mention of it. But they left it on the website. I don't know. Um, have you ever objected to anything on the website other than this reference to bestiality? Uh, I don't. I don't recall. Now, did they remove the reference to bestiality? I don't know. I have to check. Why did you object to this reference to bestiality? Because it is not related to to uh, homosexuality. Um. Let me ask you now to look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 2199. Okay. Uh, now, um, Your Honor, defendant interveners, uh, protect marriage, would object to questioning about this document. It does not appear from its face to reference Proposition 8. We don't believe that one organization's um, internet site related to homosexuality is relevant to the issues in this case, and so we would object to questioning on it. Witness testified that he was secretary of the organization whose website this was, Nick. Honor, but it's a general website that's not directed at this, at least this exhibit does not demonstrate that it is a, a Prop 8 um, that it's directed at Proposition 8. Your Honor, this actually was already admitted during the testimony of Ms. Zia. Um, Dr. Tam. Yes. Um, uh, this, um, this printout from the website uh, does not, as near as I can tell, mention bestiality. Uh, however, uh, the first line uh, says, studies show that homosexuality is linked to pedophilia. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, did you believe that was true? Uh, yes, I do. And, um, and so you supported uh, this website making those kind of statements? Uh, yes. Um, incidentally, uh, could you read into the record what the heading of this uh, is? 
at the very at the very top it says one man, one woman, right? Right. And then what what's the next line? Homosexuality linked to pedophilia. Um and um it says here homosexuals are twelve times more likely to molest children. Do you see that? Yes. And did you believe that was an appropriate thing for your organization to be telling people? Which organization? The organization that you're the secretary of that puts out this website. Uh, yes, because this information uh, are now, from what you see here, uh, those are not the statements of the organization. Those are just links to other websites. So, as far as I, my position is, uh, if there is something like this people want to read about, then the organization has a right to to link it. But you're not only linking it. Your organization is stating right here, homosexuals are 12 times more likely to molest children. That was written by your organization, correct? No, this, as far as I know, is what that paper, or that, the more, when you click that, the uh, whatever information provided in that uh, web page Dr. Tan. Shows, shows that homosexuals are 12 times more likely to molest children. It is in that website. It's not a statement made by this organization. Dr. Tam, this is a page from your organization's website, correct? From the organization I I have a small part in. You're the secretary of it, right? Yeah. But there are presidents, vice presidents, and other more important oh, persons. Yes, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there are other officers, <laughs> and there are other people who are not officers. Right, what's the power of the secretary of your company? Um, considerable. <laughs> well, you're um, very generous. <laughs> um, but. Um, uh, my point, sir, is that if you are trying to prove that, you know, I influence that organization, then that's not true. I'm just the secretary. I was told. First of all, you 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 told you told us that you looked at the website. You're familiar with the website. Yeah, Remember I'm telling us that. With it. I'm familiar with that. Remember telling us that. Yeah. Okay. And um, and you knew that the words on this page had been typed by somebody from your organization, correct? You knew that? Okay. And you know that somebody from your organization had typed the words, homosexuals are 12 times more likely to molest children and put it on the internet, correct? Now, do you believe that homosexuals are 12 times more likely to molest children? You believe that? Uh, yeah, based on the different literature that I've read. Oh, and what literature have you read, sir, that says that? Uh, I've read what is posted here. What is it? Tell me what it is that you read. I, I don't remember now. Uh, who, who, who authored it? Some um, are from apparently academic uh, papers. Well, what academic papers, sir? I don't remember. Would well, you remember any of them? Um, was it in a, um, a journal or was it in a book that you read? Some could be news, some could be from journals. Could be. I'm not asking you what it could be. You told me you'd read something that said that homosexuals were 12 times more likely to molest children. You told me that, right? Okay. Now I'm asking you what you read. Was, that, was it a book? I don't remember. Was it an article? I don't remember. Who wrote it? I don't know.
Okay, sir. Um, let me um, ask you to turn next to Plaintiff's Exhibit 513. And this is something that you wrote during the campaign for Proposition 8, correct, sir? Yes. And the heading is, what if we lose, correct? Yes. And what you meant is, what if we lose Proposition 8, correct? Yes. And you say that if... Proposition 8 does not pass. They, whoever that is, will lose no time pushing the gay agenda. Do you see that? Yes. And you say the San Francisco city government is under the rule of homosexuals. Do you see that? Yes. Did you believe that, sir? Yes, I believe that. Who were the homosexuals that San Francisco was under the rule of? Uh, at that time, Supervisor Tom Amiano was a supervisor there. And, th and there was also a mayor, right? Yes. Mayor was a homosexual, was he, according to you? I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't think so either, actually. Um, I... So if you knew the mayor wasn't homosexual, why are you telling people in part of the Proposition 8 campaign that San Francisco is under the rule of homosexuals? Uh, well, you see, Mayor Newsom passed out the same-sex marriage licenses in 2004. Uh, and if he is not a friend of them, why would he do that? When you say that San Francisco was under the rule of homosexuals, did you mean that San Francisco was under the rule of heterosexuals that were friends of homosexuals? Is that what you meant? Uh, could be. Could be. Yeah, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I, I don't write things so specifically, you know, that well defined. Okay. So you try to use your legal arguments to pinpoint me in something that I said that that is sometimes I think it's beyond my original intent. Um, well, let, let, let's see um, as we go through this um, how you use words. Um, you go on to say that after legalizing same-sex marriages, they want to legalize prostitution. Do you see that? Yes. Do you think the people who were opposing Proposition 8 wanted to legalize prostitution? Uh, that was a Proposition K at that time uh, on the San Francisco ballot. And I saw Several homosexual politicians, uh, they supported that. So I draw from, that, from their support that they want to legalize prostitution. That didn't have anything to do with Proposition 8, did it, sir? No, it didn't. Um, and you knew that at the time, didn't you? You knew that... Proposition K was entirely separate from Proposition 8. Yeah. They didn't have anything to do with one another, right? Right. You knew that. But nevertheless, you said, after legalizing same-sex marriage, they want to legalize prostitution. That's what you wrote here, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you then go on to say, what will be next? On their agenda list is 
legalizing having sex with children. Do you see that? And that's what you told people to try to convince them to vote yes on Proposition 8, correct? Uh, yes. Um, Your Honor, I would offer Plaintiff's Exhibit 513. Very well, 513 is admitted. Well, may I add my comment to this? Um, usually people say you've got to wait till uh, your lawyer examines you, but go ahead, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to explain my reason of writing this, uh, because when I look at liberal countries in Europe, uh, which have, or even look north at, at Canada at that time, uh, they have their legal uh, age of consent down to like 14 years old. Uh, some are even down to 13 years old. To me, those is very unacceptable, and that is having sex with children or an older child having sex with another child. And, uh, and, and, and Canada uh, was a country that legalized same-sex marriage. So the liberal trend, that's what I'm afraid of. Finished? Okay. Now, um, Proposition 8 didn't have anything to do with the age of sexual consent, correct? That's nowhere in the 14 words that you wrote, correct? Right. Now, you could have written it in, but you didn't write it in, right? I wouldn't really write it in. No, you didn't write it in. And so the proposition didn't have anything to do with this, did it? Right. Okay. And um, uh, Canada, after it adopted same-sex marriage, it didn't change the age of consent, did it? Right. Um, and when you talk about these liberal countries in Europe, some of those countries have same-sex marriage and some don't, correct? Yes. And um, the ones that have adopted same-sex marriage, they haven't changed their age of consent, have they? Well, I don't know. You don't know. But you don't have any reason to believe that allowing same-sex marriage would affect the age of consent. Correct, sir? Not directly, no. Okay. Um, uh, now, uh, you go on to say that if Proposition 8 loses, one by one, other states would fall into Satan's hand. Do you see that? Yes. And by falling into Satan's hand, you meant permitting gays and lesbians to marry, correct? Yes. Um, Your Honor, I would um, offer... I, I, I already did offer plans. Five, 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 two, two. Um, uh, I would ask you next to look at plaintiff's exhibit 2507. This is a uh, email from you dated September 16th, 2008, mm -hmm. and it is essentially the same as exhibit uh, 513 that we just looked at, correct? It's, it's, dated, it's dated later in September, um, but it's essentially the same, correct? 507, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, Your Honor, uh, we would offer Plaintiff's Exhibit 2507. 2507 is admitted. Um, let me ask you to look next at Plaintiff's Exhibit 2343. Okay. And this is a translation um, of a document that was originally in Chinese. And if you look um, behind the blue divider, you will see the Chinese um, original. Point of clarification and potentially an objection. Mine appears to be, what, what I was given appears to be a compilation exhibit some of which I may well have objections to, but I don't know if you're referring to a, an individual exhibit or if this is, in fact, the entire exhibit. This is the entire exhibit. Well, then I would object, Your Honor. I think several pages within the, this exhibit um, are, some of them appear to, well, let me make sure, yes, some of them appear to relate to articles that were written years before Proposition 8 and do not refer to Proposition 8 at all. Uh, so we would object that they're not specifically relevant to this case. And, yeah, at least... At least. Propos I'm sorry. Proposition 8 is mentioned On some prominently and throughout the exhibit, is it not? It is, but this is an exhibit that appears to have been put together by plaintiffs of, of differing documents that came from it's, it's on different sources, and I, it was, I don't believe it was produced this way. And in terms of the individual documents, um, as I said, each one there may be different, but in terms of the articles that are in here that do not relate to, there's Chinese articles that have been translated into English, and at least some of them predate Proposition 8 by many years, and we would contend are not relevant and would object on those grounds. Can you point to an example? Yes, Your Honor, me. <coughs> Your Honor, may I, just a moment. Counsel, you have um, the same exhibit, 2199. I'm, I'm sorry, that wasn't the exhibit. It was uh, 2343. Yes. 2343. 2343. Okay. And it appears, well, there's a Chinese article. I don't know how many pages into the exhibit it is. The article is entitled, Homosexuality is Not Equal Rights. Where are you reading? Well, the, um, the actual, the English translation, I guess, that they're purporting to offer of one article is page one, two, three, fourth page in on the back of that page. And the, the English title that they've translated it to is The Harm to Children from Same-Sex Marriage. And it, uh, it, appears to be, it appears to predate Proposition 8 and to be an article that he wrote on the topic, but not specifically to Proposition 8. Oh, I see. But this is an article written by the witness? It, it appears to be, yes. Attached to uh, documents that reference Proposition 8. I don't... I, I don't know. I, I think that plaintiffs put together this exhibit. I don't know that it came this way. I don't know that the article was attached to anything that was, uh, a, I believe that this is an article that they pulled down off of his website that is a standalone article, that he has multiple articles on his website, his own personal home, his own Bill Tam's website. 
and that there's multiple articles on there from his deposition. I'm, I'm aware of this. And it is not a, a Proposition 8 um, website. These are, it's, it's an article that he wrote years ago and has posted on his website. Well, I gather this is a document, the source of which is the witness. It is, Your Honor, but again, we would contend, we would and object. Mr. Boyce can explore what the document is, and how it came to be put together, and how it was used, all of that. Um, Dr. Tam? Yes. Um, the, um, does, your, does your exhibit have um, handwritten pages in the lower right-hand corner? Written. Lower right-hand corner. This is exhibit 2343. I'm at 2343. 2343. Right. I'm there. What? Yeah, I'm at 2343. 2343. Right. Now the first, the first um, three pages of this um, are affidavits of um, accuracy from the translator. You see that? Yes. Okay. Let me go to the fourth page of the exhibit. And it says, why should we support Proposition 8? Do you see yes. that? Yes. Right. And uh, is that something that you wrote? No. Not. That's your testimony? Right. Um, all right. Let me... Um, this is... In reference to, uh, wait, wait a minute. Is it referring to this uh, this page? Go to the Chinese version. Right, right. Have that? Uh, yeah, with this, right? Yes. Yeah, I did not write this document. You did not write that document? No. Um, do you see in the bottom right hand corner of the Chinese version? Right. What does that say, sir? Bottom right hand corner. Yes. Bottom right hand. May I approach, Your Honor? One man, one woman dot net, right? Yes. Yeah. They are organizations that you're the secretary of, correct, sir? Right. Uh, have you seen this document before? Yes, I have. But I did not write it. Uh, who did write it? Uh, somebody in charge of that part of the uh, printing and, and, uh, and uh, putting this together. And what was the purpose of putting this together? Uh, well, for support of Prop 8. Okay, so this was prepared by the organization that you are a secretary of to support Proposition 8, correct? Right. Okay. Um, now, um, let me ask you to look at and go back to the English version for a moment. portion of this that begins the harm to children from same-sex marriage. Am Hock Singh. You see that? Yes. Uh, and this is also a translation from something that was in Chinese, correct? Right. And did you write this? Yes. Um, and when did you write this? I believe in 2004. And what was the purpose of writing it? Uh, in response to, I think, Mayor Newsom's 
passing law of the same-sex marriage licenses? So it was in, in opposition to the, the 2004 issuance of same-sex marriage licenses? Yes. Um, and was this also distributed by uh, one man, one woman dot net? No. How was this distributed? This was a Chinese article I wrote and put onto my website. Among 60 other articles, Chinese articles. Now, when you say you put it on your website, what website was that? Uh, Builtim.org. Um, Your Honor, I would um, I would offer um, the uh, four pages that we begin begins. Why should we support Proposition Eight as Exhibit Twenty Three Forty Three A? Then I would offer. The remainder of the document that begins the harm to children from same-sex marriage as Plaintiff's Exhibit 2343B. Very well. Objection over Rule 23A and 20. I'm sorry, 2343A and 2343B are admitted. Now, um, looking at uh, 2343A, uh, Dr. Tam, the um, document that begins, why should we support Proposition 8? Do you have that? Yes. Um, say, science proves that homosexuality is a changeable sexual preference. Do you see that? No, we're... we're um, on, uh, number two says, same-sex marriage is not a civil right. Okay. See the sentence there that says, science proves that homosexuality is a changeable sexual preference? Yes, I see that. What science were you referring to? Uh, I did not write this. Okay. Do, do you know what this. science is being referred to? Uh, yes. You do? Um, uh, what uh, is that a scientific study? Uh, have you heard of uh, Dr. Spitzer? He used to be the, I think, a very prominent position at EPA, who in 1973, he was the one or one of the persons who uh, promote that Homosexuality is not a disease or mental disease or whatever. Not not a not a medical not, not a disease. Right. Right. And uh, because of that, what I learned was uh, homosexuality were taken out of being a medical condition that need to be treated. It was taken out of out medical of conditions, right? Yeah. Becoming not a disease is a not a disease. It's just a, 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 a part of normal human behavior. Right, normal human behavior. Yeah, that's what I learned. That's what you learned. Right, and, and you then, believe that. And yeah. then, and then, in later on, I don't know at what year, the same Dr. Spitzer, he produced evidence that some homosexuals did turn back and return to heterosexuality. So that is a very prominent scientist. 
So that's what I refer to here, that it is a changeable sexual preference, that it is not genetically wired. As you understand it, did Dr. Spitzer say it was not genetically wired? Uh, no, that's another person. That's, what person uh, is that? That's uh, Francis Collins. Francis Collins. Yeah. He's the one who, what I read, okay, was uh, the one who mapped the human genome. And, and he is the one, and you believe Francis Collins says that sexual orientation can be changed. It's not genetically wired. Um, does Francis Collins, as you understand it, believe that sexual orientation can be changed? I think so. Have you seen anything in writing that says that? Uh, I saw it in a website, yeah. What website? Uh, it's the NARTH website. What? N-A-R-T-H. Uh, and uh, do you believe that uh, the NARS website is a source of objective scientific information? Uh, well, I believe in what they say. Okay. Now you mentioned the APA a moment ago. Recall that? What's the APA? I think it's American Psychological Association. Yes, and what is the American Psychological Association? say about sexual orientation? I, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? I don't know. You never tried to find out? I, no, I don't. I don't. thought it was better to get your scientific information about this um, issue from the NARTH website as opposed to the American Psychological Association? Is that your testimony? Uh, yeah, I believe in what Nas said. Um, all right, sir, let me go back to the... Uh, to the exhibit we were talking about. Um, and let me turn to what you wrote, which is Exhibit 2343B. Um, now, Second paragraph refers to Mary Newsom. See that? Yes. It says the mayor says homosexualities, uh, homosexuals are minorities and should not be discriminated against. Do you see that? Yes. Now you would agree that homosexuals are a minority, correct? I, I don't believe they are minorities. You don't believe they're the minority? Um, I am a minority. You are a minority. Uh -huh. um, uh, what percentage of the population do you think are homosexuals? Uh, my understanding of minority is what, based, what percentage of the population the skin color? What what population? What percentage of the population is homosexual? I, what I read is about from two to four percent. Two to four percent. Is that a minority, sir? In terms of their sexual practice, it is. It is, okay. So they are a minority. Now, the second thing the mayor says, 
is that this minority, homosexuals, should not be discriminated against. Do you see that? Right. Uh, do you agree with that? Yes, I, I agree with that. Okay. Um, so you agree that homosexuals are a minority and should not be discriminated against. Um, now, the next line of this says homosexuals are not minorities. Do you see that? Right. And you wrote that, sir, right? Uh, yes. Let me look back at my Chinese first, okay? Okay. Because this is translation. Okay. All right. Now, in the Chinese, what I wrote uh, is translated into English. It should be more accurately to be stated that homosexuals is, are not a racial minority. Not a racial minority. Right. So what you're saying is the Chinese writing, um, uh, contrary to this um, translation, um, really says homosexuals are not racial minorities. Is that right? right? Um, the, the word racial is not put into the English here. But it is in the Chinese. Yes. Um, if Your Honor, so the record is clear. Um, we will mark the Chinese version as um, 2343C, and we would offer that. Very well. Let me ask you to turn to um, Exhibit 537. I don't have a 537. Uh, 537? 2537 or 537? 537. I apologize, Your Honor. Uh, I'll come back to that if you don't have, if you don't have it in the book. Um, um, let me ask you, do you have uh, Exhibit 515? Yes, I have five one five. This is a article that appeared on October fifteenth, two thousand eight, in the San Jose Mercury News. Correct, sir. Yes. And um, if you turn to the second page of the article, the next to last paragraph, there is a quotation attributed to you, correct, sir? Yes. And that was, in fact, what you said, correct, sir? Yes. And um, what you said was, quote, we hope to convince Asian Americans that gay marriage will encourage more children to experiment with a gay lifestyle and that that lifestyle comes with all kinds of disease. Do you see that? Yes. And this was part of your campaign to uh, convince voters to adopt um, Proposition 8, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, do you have uh, Exhibit 2601 in your book? All right. 
fifteen and five fifteen. Um, honor. Okay. I'm happy to if, if if defendant's counsel wants me to, but that was that was the only par paragraph I was interested in. Do you have Exhibit uh, 2601? Yes, I'm there. And the first pages are 2601A, correct? I'm at 2601. Um, and does the exhibit number have an A there? May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Oh, okay. Uh, and Exhibit 2601A bears the document production numbers TAMPM 4313 through 4314, correct? Yes. Uh, and can you identify this document? This is a document I received from a medical doctor. Uh, what medical doctor? You mean his specialty? Or just who it was? Oh, from uh, Dr. Lao. Lao Han Chit. What was the purpose of this? He sent me an article that he wrote. And um, is the article attached here? That's the article. Okay. Now look at what's been marked as 2601B, which bears the document production numbers TAMPM 4315. To four three one seven. Okay. Can you identify that document? Yes. What is that? Oh, uh, that's another article he wrote. Okay. Now go to Exhibit two six zero one C. It bears document production numbers TAMPM four three one eight through. Four three two zero. Oh. And can you identify that document? Seems to be a translation. Oh wait. Yeah, it seems to be a translation of two six one B. This is a translation of 2601B. And, and this is a translation that you had in your files, correct, sir? In my file? Yes, this was produced to us. We didn't make this translation. You produced oh. this translation to us, correct? Could be. I don't remember. I, actually, I did not really read this article. Um, okay, it, it is headed, Reasons Why We Do Not Support Same-Sex Marriage. Do you see that? Right. That says Presence Ministry. Do you see that? Right. What is Presence Ministry? Uh, the Chinese Christian Organization in L.A. I, do I take it from what you've said before that you don't have any connection with that organization? No. Not have any connection, correct? Well, I uh, I know the president, and I went to one of their conferences. Yes, that's my connection. 
That's your only connection with him, right? Right, right. Okay. I, I, I'm, I was a guest there. Let me ask you to look next at Exhibit 2187. And um, this is a, a flyer for a uh, open air rally, correct? Right. And um, this was a rally that Mr. Prentice participated in, correct? Yes. And this was a rally organized um, by you, correct? Uh. I had a part in it. It is organized by one man one woman dot net. And um, uh, beyond that, one of the sponsors is your traditional family coalition, correct? Right. And one of the co-sponsors was protectmarriage.com, correct? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Your Honor, I would offer Exhibit 2187. Very well, 2187 is admitted. This was a rally that was part of the campaign that you and the um, protectmarriage.com was waging to adopt Proposition 8, correct? Yes. Uh, and if you look at the third paragraph, the third sentence of the first paragraph, you say, it is time the church rise up against the forces of evil that are destroying families and young souls. Do you see that? Yes. What are the forces of evil that you're referring to? I did not write this, so I'm not referring to anything. Who wrote this, sir? I don't know. You saw it at the time, didn't you? I'm not very familiar with this uh, with this document. Isn't it a fact, sir, that you were the one that asked Mr. Prentice to attend this uh, rally? Oh uh, yes. Um, and is it your testimony that you didn't see this at the time? No, because there's, there were many people working in preparing these rallies. As I said, my role in this organization is pretty small because I have my own organization to deal with. So a lot of their documents I haven't had a chance to read, not to mention, you know, to, to comment on it. Your organization is the Traditional Family Coalition, correct? That's right. And that was one of the sponsors of this rally, right? Yeah, right. Um, and you were the one that asked Mr. Prentice to attend, correct? That's correct. Um, who asked the other people to attend? Uh, there are other leaders in that organization. They asked the other speakers to attend. Who did? Who asked them? Uh, the the chairman. Chairman of what? Of uh, that organization. Did you play any role in getting these people there, sir? No, I I didn't know Tony Perkins. I didn't know these speakers. All I know was uh, Ron Prentice. Didn't know any of the speakers. Why did you ask Mr. Prentice to attend? Well, Mr. Prentice was the CEO of uh, California Family Council. And um, if you didn't know the speakers, why were you asking anybody to attend? What was your role here? My role was very small. I asked Ron Prentice because I knew him, but I didn't know Tony Perkins. I didn't know one base song. I didn't know David. I even cannot pronounce his name. 
Did, did you attend this rally, sir? Yeah, I attended. You attended? Yeah, but I did not speak there. Meet the people that were speaking? Yeah, I met them. Met them? Right. You met Tony Perkins and the others? Yeah, I met them. And it's your but I was not even allowed to speak there, so you, you see how small a role I was. They told you you couldn't speak? Right. They tell you why you couldn't speak? I mean? They tell you why you couldn't speak? Well, we have other speakers there. Um, let me ask you, I'll, you know, I would um, offer Exhibit uh, 2187. Very well, 2187 is admitted. Um, and, and just to be clear, Dr. Tam, yes. your testimony that before today you'd never seen this flyer. Is that true? This flyer? Yeah. It might have gone in front of my eyes, but I... You don't remember it in anything. I don't remember the content or, you know, something like this could have passed by my desk. But there are so many documents that pass by, uh, some I did not pay attention to. And this is one of those. Uh, well, let me show you another document and see if you pay attention to this one. Um, look at uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 2595. All right. Um, no, excuse me, uh, Dr. Tam. Um, I think there's another document I'd like to have you look at. Um, look at the plaintiff's exhibit 2204. Okay. Now, you remember telling me a moment ago in connection with Exhibit 2187 that you didn't remember this and didn't have, just played a small role, all you did was get Mr. Prentice there? Remember telling me that? Yes. Uh, now, would you look at Exhibit 2204 and tell me what that is? This is a press invitation. Uh, to attend that rally exactly. at Cupertino. It's the right. same rally, isn't it, sir? Yes. And uh, who's sending out this press invitation? I did. You did? Right. And um, this press invitation uh, says that uh, you are one of the two contacts for the uh, rally, correct, sir? Right. Now, does that refresh your recollection that um, you were uh, more involved in this than you said before? Well, uh, this is, I'm one of the uh, contacts, and it is, Send out with our stationery. That's because uh, I have more uh, contact with the Chinese press. So uh, using our stationery to invite them may gain more attendance. This press invitation didn't go out without your knowledge, did it, sir? Oh, I know about it. I knew about it. Yeah, of course. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, if you turn to Plaintiff's Exhibit 2203, yes, you personally sent out an email. Yes. About this rally, right? Mm-hmm. And Exhibit 2203 is that email, correct? And you are inviting people to the rally, correct? Yes. 
telling people who your speakers are. Yes. Despite the fact that you claim that you didn't know the speakers. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah, that's true. I, I didn't know some of the speakers. Uh, Your Honor, I would uh, offer Exhibits 2204 and 2203. You're offering 2595 as well? I'm also offering 2595. Very well. They will be admitted. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Tam, would you turn to Exhibit 2595? Okay. And can you identify what this document is? Yes, I, I know of this. You know of this document? Yes. How do you know of this document? Because this is uh, one of the, this is the English version of the uh, Chinese uh, flyers they put out for Prop 8. They, they put out? Yeah. Who's the they? Uh, the team that is in one man one woman dot net that uh, takes care of uh, the uh, this um, promotional flyers. They have a team to do it. You have a team that does that. Yeah. Um, and did you see this uh, flyer at the time it went out? Yes. And this was something that you were putting out in order to convince people to vote for Proposition 8, correct? Mm-hmm, yes. And um, the last bullet on the first page says that Proposition 8 protects against social moral decay. Do you see that? Yes. What is the social moral decay that's being referred to there? Uh, well, from the... Christian angle, homosexuality, or the sex between two persons of the same sex is a, is a sin. And what you were saying is Proposition 8 protects against homosexuality. Is it a sin? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. I think what they mean is... Uh, if they, they, who's they? The persons who, who, who wrote this. And of course, I, I know about this and, and I agree with this too. Okay. So you can say that me. Okay. Yeah, so you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the they is right. you. Yeah. Okay. A they is not me. Okay. I agree with what they say here. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so, so moral decay, what it mean, what it would mean is if same-sex marriage is is legal, it would encourage children to explore same sex as their future marriage partner. And from the uh, both Asian cultural and also from uh, our Christian angle, we think. This is uh, social moral decay. Uh, and on the second page, um, one man, one woman dot net is a little more specific about what social moral decay is, correct? Mm hmm. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, under number two, it says same-sex marriage is not a civil right. The last sentence says, if sexual orientation is characterized as a civil right, then so would pedophilia, polygamy, and incest. Do you see that, sir? Mm-hmm, yes. Do you agree with that, sir? Yes, I agree. That's what you were telling people in order to convince them to vote for Proposition 8, correct? Yes. Um... Let me um, let me go down to um, uh, 
5.4, where you say, countries that legalized same-sex marriage saw alarming moral decline. Do you see that? Yes. The Netherlands legalized same-sex marriage in 2001, and to date, incest and polygamy became legal. Do you see that? Yes. Now, did you agree with that, sir? Uh, yes. Um, you believe that after Netherlands legalized same-sex marriage, the Netherlands went on after that to legalize incest and polygamy? Uh, it says here, to date, it does not say uh, something caused the other to happen. However, it shows the moral decay of a liberal country in their views of, of sex. Um, you're, you're saying here that after same-sex marriage was legalized, the Netherlands legalized incest and polygamy. Whether that was causal or not, you're saying that's what happened after same-sex was legalized, correct? Same-sex marriage. Uh, yeah, look at the date. Is 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 polygamy happens afterwards? Who told you that, sir? Where did you get that idea? Uh, it's in the internet. Internet. Somewhere out in the internet, it says that the Netherlands legalized incest and polygamy in 2005. Now, frankly, I did not write this. All right, polygamy was was legalized in 2005. Uh, another another person in the organization found it, and he showed me that. Put it out there to convince voters to vote for Proposition 8? Uh, well, I, I look at the document and I think that was true. Um, did you ask, did you ever uh, look up what the law was in the Netherlands or ask anybody to do that? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, there are different documents out there uh, that shows that was true. Um, and when you say that was true, what you're saying is that after the Netherlands legalized same-sex marriage, the Netherlands legalized incest and polygamy. Is that what you're saying? I don't know about incest, but polygamy... Well, it says incest here. Do you see oh, it? it? Yeah, it's, it's, it says here, incest is there, but it does not say whether, when it was legalized. Um, right? Uh, so, so what you're saying is they may have had incest before same-sex marriage. Why? That, if that was the case, same-sex marriage couldn't have had anything to do with the incest, right? Right. It is not. It, it does not say that same-sex marriage causes incest. It does not say in this in this document. Now, if you it just show it just show when a country is so liberal in the in the law regarding sex between people. Ed, you support civil unions and, and domestic partnerships. You told me that right at the beginning, remember? That's still your testimony, right? Yes. Um, uh, Now, you say that here that Sweden accepted same-sex unions in 1994. Today, siblings can legally marry. Traditional marriage no longer valued. Do you see that? Yes. Now, those unions were civil unions. They weren't marriage. Correct, sir? Uh... Yeah, right. Right. So any any problem that was here was coming not from marriage, but from the civil unions that you say you support, correct? 
Well, I said I support domestic partnership. I, I didn't say about civil union. I don't remember me asking you about civil union just like two minutes ago. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't know how to look at civil union, really. So, but I, I support domestic partnerships. Well, what's the difference between a domestic partnership and a civil union? Do you know? I don't really know, but it seems like more it's more uh, closer to marriage, a union, civil union. Because of the name? Yeah, because of the name. Is there anything other than the name? Uh, I haven't gone into study about it. No, so the domestic partnerships are the same as marriage except for the name, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I learned. Yeah, right. and you, you support domestic partnerships, but you think that just changing the name of domestic partnerships to marriage will have this enormous moral decay, right? Yes. Will bring on incest and polygamy, right? And pedophilia. Uh, right? Well, what... How would you... Just asking you the question, sir. Okay, I believe that if the term marriage can be used beyond one man and one woman, then any two person of any age or of any relationship can use the same argument and come and ask for the term marriage. That would lead to incest. That would lead to polygamy. I mean, if if if, if this is a mar if this is a civil right, what would prevent the other groups not to use the same argument and come and ask for the name marriage? Um, right now, can um, two people of any age or any relationship become domestic partners? Can a brother and sister become domestic partners? No, no I don't think so mm. either. Uh, and a man and a 10-year-old girl could not become domestic partners, correct? Right? Okay. So, um, you don't have to allow people of all ages and all relationships to enter into domestic partnerships, correct? Oh, could you, could you repeat that again? Sure. Domestic partnerships are limited to people of a certain age and they exclude people of a certain relationship like brothers and sisters, correct? Okay, yeah. And you know that, right? Yeah, that's why I support it. Yeah. And, um, um, and just the fact that they've offered domestic partnerships to gays and lesbians has not led them to offer domestic partnerships to underage children or brothers and sisters, correct? Oh, okay. I, I, now I understand your logic. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. All right. Well, the logic is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the logic, logic is, is good, good, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the logic, yeah. Yeah, the logic is good, but when you look at some European countries, uh, then you see you see something like this. Now, for example, the age of consent. For me, I don't care whether it is same sex or different sex. For me, it's a moral decay. If If a country allows two people of 13 year old plus one day to have sex legally, to me, is moral decay. Dr. Tam, is it your position that because we change the name, just the name, and everything else you've said the same, we change the name of domestic partnerships to marriage, all of a sudden we're going to begin to have sex with 13 year old girls? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Because the name of marriage is so important, especially for us parents to teach our kids, all right, that if the name of marriage is not so narrow, 
which is between people of different relate uh, different blood uh, of of different of of uh, age above 18 then our children you know i always we always look at things from the angle of a parent that they would fantasize everyone fantasize whom they will marry when they grow up so children will fantasize about marrying either a man and a woman or a woman and to us parents you may say that I'm a paranoid Chinese parent uh, we we get very uh, very upset about that however if domestic partner is is defined as it is now then we can explain to our children that yeah, there are some same-sex person wants to have their lifetime together as committed partners, and that is called domestic partner. But it is not marriage. Then we have something that is very easy for our children to understand. But if you mix up marriages as different kind of sexes, then to us as parents, we, I have parents coming to me and, 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 and ask me you know, what to do about this. Finished? Okay. Um, you agree that uh, just because you allow gays and lesbians to marry, that does not necessarily mean that you have to let brothers and sisters marry, correct? Right. And you agree that just because you allow gays and lesbians to marry, you don't have to allow people to have sex with children, correct? Right. Um, that's up to what the people and the legislator decide, correct? Um, you've got to say yes, you, not just not. Um, the, um, uh, it, it's also true that you realize that it's important the gays and lesbians, that they be able to marry. Correct? That's important to them, right? You've got to say yes. Yes. Um, and, you know, just as your children are benefited from you and your wife being married, the children of gays and lesbians would be benefited if their parents were married. Correct? No. Oh. Um, uh, if um, you don't think you don't think children want their parents to be married? I don't know what you're trying to get at. <laughs> uh, trying to get at, and I'll be really clear is that children of gays and lesbians want their parents to be married just like children of heterosexual couples want their parents to be married. Because the word marriage means something. Correct? You may think they shouldn't have it. Yes. Okay, you may mm -hmm. think they shouldn't have it for all sorts of reasons. But you recognize that that's important to those children, correct? Yes, okay. Um, uh, let me turn to another subject. Um, let me ask you to look at Plaintiff's Exhibit Identify what this is, sir. Yes. What is it? That's an email that I received from uh, Andy Puno. 
about the uh, statement of unity. And the second page of the exhibit, the page that bears the document production stamp TAMPM6668, is a statement of unity, correct, sir? Yes. And this was a statement of unity with respect to the Proposition 8 campaign, correct? Yes. And it is headed protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. And at the bottom you say, I and the organization I represent join in the foregoing statement of unity, correct? Yes. And you sign it, correct? Yes. On behalf of yourself and on behalf of the traditional family coalition, correct? Yes. And this statement of unity that you say you agree to in the second line says victory depends on the mutual commitment of each coalition partner to work in the service of a unified campaign. Do you see that? Uh, what? Which paragraph? Very first paragraph. The second line. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that. You agreed to that, correct? Uh, yes. Agreed to work in the service of a unified campaign with protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. And going to the second paragraph, you agreed that multiple campaign committees, independent strategies for public messaging, and personal use of the marriage amendment to raise funds or increase membership are counterproductive and increase the likelihood of defeat. Correct? Yes. And you agreed that you would not have independent strategies for public messaging. Correct, sir? Uh, yes, but later on I forgot about this document and I have made some independent uh, statements I believe not aligned with protectmarriage.com and not following the directions of this document. Well, sir, you're a, you consider yourself a, an honest person, don't you? Yes. And um, you wouldn't sign something you didn't believe, would you? Uh, right. Yeah, and I wouldn't sign it if I don't believe. And when you sign something and make a commitment, you take that commitment seriously, don't you, sir? Uh, yes. Um, now, one of the things that you committed here, number two, do you see this, the heading message, discipline? You agreed that public communications by coalition partners in support of the marriage amendment must be approved by the campaign manager for strategic message discipline. Do you see that, sir? Uh, yes. You agreed to that, didn't you, sir? Uh, yes, at that time, yes. But and later on, I, I must admit that I violated this this message principle. Let's, let's explore that. Um, this was uh, signed um, uh, in July of 2008, correct? Okay, yeah. Right? Yes. Um, so up to that point, you had message discipline, correct? I think so. Yeah. And um, you didn't start violating this pledge the next day, did you? I don't know when. I don't know when. Right. When, when do you think you started violating this pledge? Uh, frankly, I, I don't remember. I don't know. Um, what did you say that violated this pledge? 
uh, I think in like what I told uh, Mercury, San Jose Mercury News about um, homosexuality leads to all kinds of diseases. I think uh, I said that by saying that I might violate the principle. Um, now that was published in the Mercury News, right? That yeah. wasn't something that was hidden. That was right out there in the public, right? Right. Did anybody from uh, protectmarriage.com uh, come and tell you you shouldn't have said that? Yes. Who said that? Who told you that? Uh, I forgot his name, but one, one person called me and said that you shouldn't have said that. That in writing anywhere? Any record of that? Um, uh, oh, that was Mr. The White. Name? I think it's Mr. White. Yeah, uh, something like that, Mr. White. Yeah. You didn't get it in writing or anything? Remember. Had you signed the pledge, they had you do it in writing, right? Right? You've got to answer audibly. So that yes. Um, but here, this supposed statement that Mr. Wright or somebody told you was well, never written down, was never in an email, you never made a note of it, they never recorded it in any way. Is that your testimony? Yes. Now, this interview in the San Jose Mercury News was October 15, 2008. Um, did you uh, violate this pledge any other time? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Well, when, when Mr. White came to you and said, Mr. Tam, you're violating your pledge, did you say, oh, I'm sorry, I won't do that anymore? Uh, let's see, that was in October. That happened in October. Yeah, after October, I think I haven't, I haven't said anything to violate this. I try to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so, so the only time that you say you violated this pledge was the San Jose Mercury News. Uh, no, there's another time. What was that other time? Uh, I think that time was when I spoke to a Chinese newspaper reporter. And what did you tell that Chinese newspaper reporter? Uh, I mentioned something about uh, what you have probed me before about uh, uh, some European countries now accepts uh, sibling marriage, and that happened in September, sometime in September. Anybody from protectmarriage.com tell you come to you after that and say you shouldn't be talking about what's happening in other countries? No, because there was a Chinese new pa newspaper report, and I don't think they they read that. Um, let me go back to. Um, Um, uh, exhibit 2199. 
Okay. Um, you know, this is, you know, where your one man, one woman dot net website says that homosexuality is linked to pedophilia and homosexuals are 12 times more likely to molest children. You remember that? Mm hmm Yes. Um, uh, did uh, anyone from protectmarriage.com come and tell you you ought to take that off your website? Uh, no, they didn't. Because if I remember correctly, this website or this part of the website was established in uh, 2009. It was way oh, after Prop 8 was passed. Dr. Tam, um, let me ask you to look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 2595. 595? Yes. I think it is in <clears throat> 4595. Yes, I think we, we offered that earlier. Um, all right, 4595 is in. Now, this is clearly before the November 2008 election, correct? Oh yes, this is. And it's something from the one man one woman dot net website correct sir right but this website was in operation during the campaign correct sir oh yeah it is and um, uh, but this website is not does not belong to a traditional family coalition and only traditional family coalition signed that pledge with protectmarriage.com. One man, one woman dot net never signed anything with them. Let me try to unpack that, okay? What you're saying is that this wasn't a violation of the pledge because one man, one woman dot net and never signed the pledge, right? That's what you're saying? All right. Okay. Um, I'm focusing on a different question. Okay. One woman, one man dot net was a website that was up and running during the campaign for Proposition 8, correct? Right. Okay. But those information, th this particular page that you pointed at, I remember was not up there during the campaign. Remember that? Yeah. Um, Sir, if I represented to you that a prior witness has testified that she saw this during the campaign, would that refresh your recollection? Maybe she saw the one man, one woman dot net. Oh, saw this one about homosexuality and pe ped pedophilia link, and homosexuals are 12 times more likely to molest children. Saw this particular page during the election. Would that refresh your recollection, sir? Mm, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is. But then, uh, well, I cannot remember correctly when. Okay, but that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, now, protectmarriage.com was well aware of the one man, one woman dot net website, correct, sir? That I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, for example, go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 2204. Okay. This is your press invitation yes. for the rally mm -hmm. Ron Pettis yes. spoke at. Uh-huh. Yes. See what the website is? Yes. What is it? One, one, one woman dot net. 
And um, if you look at 2595, that flyer that went out. Yes. That refers to one man, one woman dot net, correct? Right. And if you um, go to plaintiff's exhibit 2187, the flyer for the open air rally that's headed restore marriage, protect children. Do you see that? Yes. Again, with Mr. Prentice speaking. Do you see that? Right. Co-sponsor is listed as protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. And right up at the top, it's one man, one woman dot net, correct? Correct. Now, um, does that refresh your recollection that the protectmarriage.com people were well aware of one man, one woman dot net? Objection overruled. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not protectmarriage.com, so you can infer that they know. Well, um, let's see if we can do more than infer. Uh, let's look at plaintiffs' exhibit 2599. Now, this is a document that is sent out August 22, 2008, correct? August 22, yes. Um, and it is sent from Mr. Schubert's firm, correct? Uh-huh, yes. And again, for the record, what was Mr. Schubert's firm's responsibility here? Uh, to run the campaign. Yes, to run the campaign. And um, uh, he sends this to a variety of people, a number of whom have been redacted. But the, among the people that have not been redacted are you, correct, sir? Yes. And protectmarriage.com, correct? Yes. And catholicexchange.com, correct? Yes. And californiafamily.org, correct? Near the answer. Uh, yeah. Yes. And a number of other people and organizations, correct? Right. Um, and it says, attached are the Project Marriage Weekly Grassroots Meeting Minutes from yesterday. Yes. Did you attend Project Marriage Weekly Grassroots Meetings? Yes. And who else attended those meetings? Uh, I remember uh, leaders of different grassroots teams. And what grassroots team were you the leader of? Uh, Asian American. Now, um, would you um, uh, look at page three of this document, the page that has the document production stamp TAMPM5429? Yes. And do you see the third bullet there at the top of the page? Yes. And would you read what that says in these Project Marriage Weekly Grassroots Meeting Minutes? Okay, yes, All uh, of the team leaders for the Proposition 8 campaign distributed by the people running the campaign. What does that say, sir? 
Uh, you mean the third bullet point? Yes, sir. A website is up one man and one woman dot com. Your Honor, I have no more questions. Very well, uh, Mr. Thompson, do you have any examination? No cross-examination, <coughs> Very well, Ms. Moss, on behalf of uh, the other defendants. Good afternoon, Dr. Tan. Can you, yeah. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Very well. Dr. Tam, I'd like to um, take you back a bit to the petition phase of the campaign. Um, and by petition phase, I'm referring to the time before Prop 8 qualified for the ballot, had gathered enough signatures and got on the ballot. Yes. Would you agree that the majority of work that you did with protectmarriage.com was during the petition phase of the campaign? Uh, Right. Very well, Honor. Dr. Tam, during the campaign broadly, not just the petition phase, but the petition phase and after it had gotten on the ballot, was there a period of time when you worked more closely with protectmarriage.com? Uh, it was during the time that we have to put out the petitions uh, to collect signatures. Those were the times I worked uh, more closely with uh, Andy Punio. And how frequently would you say that during that petition phase of the campaign that you had contact with Mr. Punio? We have about six or seven phone calls about all the uh, technicalities and also, I have met him one time uh, to pick up petition forms from him. And when you say about the technicalities, what are you referring to? Like uh, the form, the petition forms. How uh, let's see how that was uh, that should be distributed, and uh, also later on. We're filing the papers to the Secretary of State uh, for the uh, qualifying process. So uh, those were the times that he would send me the paperwork. I read it, and then I sign it, send it back to him, all that back and forth. Did you have any role in drafting any of the language that would be on the petition? No. Were you involved with Mr. Puno or anybody else from protectmarriage.com during that time in formulating messaging related to the ballot initiative that you no. were attempting to get on the ballot that became known as Prop 8, I guess? No. And of the over 1 million signatures that were ultimately gathered, how many were you personally responsible for turning over to protectmarriage.com? I would guess about not more than 20,000. 
Do you recall the questions from Mr. Boyes about your declaration that you signed? Um, it was PX Exhibit 507 in their binder. Five oh seven. Yeah, it was PX Exhibit five oh seven. It's the very first tab of plaintiff's binder. It was your declaration in support of proposed intervener's motion to intervene. Yes. I believe on your direct testimony you referred to protectmarriage.com drafting this declaration. Is there yes. a specific person within direct protectmarriage.com that you were thinking of when you said that? Uh, Mr. Andy Punio. And Mr. Punio was your attorney at the time? Yes. M Mr. Tam, you also testified that protectmarriage.com, um, in relation to this debate that you attended, that protectmarriage.com instructed you to, to go to, or to, I'm sorry, excuse me, told you to participate in that debate. Yes. What does that mean to you? Did you feel you could say no to them? Oh, yeah, I could have said no to them. And focusing then on the campaign phase after Prop 8 was actually on the ballot, um, Mr. Boyce had you look at a statement of unity. Let me find that here. It's going to be in their binder, not mine. Um, it's 2633. Yes. If you look at the the second um, par the, the paragraph that's numbered number two, which says message discipline. Yes. Public communications by coalition partners in support of mar of the marriage amendment must be approved by the campaign manager for strategic message discipline. Did that in fact occur? with you or any of your organizations that you were involved with? Uh, could you repeat the question? Sure. The discipline? Did you get any of the, the, did you get any of the messaging that you did personally approved by the campaign manager for protectmarriage.com before you sent it out? No. Did you get any of the messaging that you sent out or that your organization, the Traditional Family Coalition, sent out, approved by the campaign manager, Schubert Flint, uh, from no. .com? no. How about um, the one man, one woman dot net organization? Did any of that information get approved or submitted to the campaign manager before it was sent out? The third paragraph where it says uh, that is entitled the face of the coalition and the second sentence says all media requests are, be, are to be forwarded to the campaign for assignment to the appropriate spokesperson which may or may not be the coalition partner originally contacted by the press. Every time that you were contacted by the press did you refer it to protectmarriage.com? No. Now, looking, I'm going to take you through now some of these um, documents that Mr. Boyes raised with you today. I'd like you to look first at the tab, five, uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 513. It's the second tab in Plaintiff's Binder. Okay. First of all, did you post this on the Internet yourself? No, I did not. And at the top where it indicates, um, dear friends, who were you sending this to? I sent to the TFC members. And approximately how many TFC members are on the mailing list that you sent this to? At that time, it was about 100. And if you look right down beneath your um, signature where it says, thanks for your efforts, Bill Tam, Traditional Family Coalition. What is that? What does it say right beneath there? As updated on Friday, September 4th, 2009. 
2009. And so, to your knowledge, was this posted on the internet before <laughs> September 4th, 2009? I don't know. I Did don't you? even know. I don't even know that they posted this letter online. Did you submit this letter to the dear friends of TFC? Did you submit this to protectmarriage.com or its campaign manager before you sent it out? No. I'd now like you to turn to PX2187 in Plaintiff's Binder. One eight seven, okay. Yeah, two one eight seven, sir. Okay. At, um, at the very bottom where first of all you you did not draft you did you testify that you did not draft this? No, I flyer? did not draft this. So at the bottom where it says co-sponsors for this rally is protectmarriage.com. Do you have any basis to know why it says that on this flyer? I don't know. I did not I did not pay any attention to this flyer. Do you know whether protectmarriage.com paid for this flyer? I don't think so. If you would turn to tab PX2343, this was the tab, the exhibit that ended up getting broken up into A, B, and C. Yes, okay. I believe the Chinese version of the flyer that was admitted in evidence was 2343D. I have that down correctly. Do you have that Chinese flyer in front of you? Yes, I have. Was this flyer submitted to protectmarriage.com or Schubert Flint before it was disseminated? No. Did they have anything to do with its creation? No. Did they distribute this flyer? No. Staying in the same exhibit but going back to the article that um, you published on your website, your personal website, that Mr. Boyes asked you about. This is the 2004 article. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask you, well, do you know approximately, as of today, how many individuals have visited your personal website? About 1,600, I believe. If you turn to tab two, and I'm sorry to make you jump around, but this would be in the binder I gave you, in the defendant intervener's binder. Okay. And this is um, marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 527? Yes. Is this a printout from your, well, what is this document? This is... Uh one of the pages on my website. And is, does one have to go to this page in order to access the article such as the one that um, is contained in PX2343? Yes. And can you tell me as of, well, what is the date? Do you see the date in the bottom right-hand corner of this document that shows when it was printed out? And can you tell me, as of that date in November of 2009, how many visitors it shows have been to your website? 1547. Do you know how many of those may have been lawyers in this case? Funny. Do you know how many of those, if any, were lawyers in this case? Or the visitors? Yes. I don't know. And Dr. Tam, turning to tab PX2507 in Plaintiff's Binder. What? 
Is this the same small email list of, of TSC members that you sent the, um, the last email that we looked at that got posted on the Presence Ministry website? Is it the same email list being referred to here? Yes. Uh, all the emails that I write to my members, they are, they are either titled Dear Friends or Dear Friends of TSC. And the mailing list number is very small. It's like 100 at that time. And was this email, did you share this email with protectmarriage.com or the campaign manager before you sent it out? No. Did you share any of your emails that you sent to Dear Friends of TSC with Protect Marriage or the campaign manager before you sent them out? No. And turning to PX2595. Okay. I believe on direct you testified that this was the English version of the Chinese flyer that we were looking at just a short while ago. Yes. Did this English version of the flyer get submitted to protectmarriage.com or Schubert Flint for their approval before it went out? I don't think so. Did they have any involvement in its creation? I don't think so. Did they distribute this flyer? No. Dr. Tam, during the campaign phase of the of, of Prop 8, after it got on the ballot, approximately how many times did you have contact with Ron Prentice, the chairman of Protect Marriage? Contact meaning? How about phone calls? Calls, maybe four times. And how frequently were you in contact with Schubert and Flint? Very rare. Uh, maybe one or two times. At any point in time during the campaign phase, or really any phase of the, the campaign for Proposition 8, did you have any involvement in drafting the official messaging of protectmarriage.com? Yes on 8? No. Did you have any involvement in in formulating the messaging strategy for protectmarriage.com, yes on eight? Uh, not at all. I was acting independently. And, and apart from not sharing any of your materials with protectmarriage.com or Schubert Flint before you sent them out, did you have any, did, did Schubert Flint or protectmarriage.com have any input into the messaging strategy of the traditional family coalition or one woman one man dot net compound sustained certainly I can rephrase did protectmarriage.com have any involvement in the messaging strategy of the traditional family coalition no. in support of prop 8 no did protectmarriage.com have any involvement in the messaging strategy of one woman one man dot net in promoting protect, uh, Prop 8? No. When you were communicating with members of the Traditional Family Coalition, were you doing so on behalf of protectmarriage.com? Uh, could you repeat that? When you communicated with members of the Traditional Family Coalition, such as in your Dear Friends letters, were you doing so on behalf of protectmarriage.com? No, not at all.
And in the documents we've looked at today, when you described working with protectmarriage.com, what were you referring to? I was referring to uh, the conference calls during the campaign phase. I mean, the conference calls that I was in, uh, and then during the petition phase, I was referring to uh, the petition signature collection, uh, things like that. And in the documents that we've looked at today and in your testimony that has explored some of your, your viewpoints on same-sex marriage and um, on homosexuality generally, did you share any of those viewpoints with anybody from protectmarriage.com at any time during the campaign? No. Did you share those viewpoints with anybody at the campaign manager, Schubert Flint, at any time during or after the campaign? No. That's all I have, Your Honor. Redirect, Mr. Place. Do uh, you mind if I like to take a break? I'm getting pretty tired. That would be fine. I assume the redirect is reasonably short. But all right. But um, if the witness wants a break, uh, that would be fine. Shall we take 10 minutes? If it is a short one, then. Okay. Out. <laughs> Want a break? We'll take a break if you don't. Uh, yeah, I would appreciate it. All right. Thank you. I think uh, five minutes.